make breakfast, grab the keys, get your wallet, your phone, your shoes, and lock the door. Oh, darn it, you forgot your keys. Does this situation sound familiar? How about, what did you eat for dinner last night? Can you answer that right away? If the answer is no, don't worry. You don't have as bad of a memory as you may presume. This is good news considering that memory is extremely important in your daily life, and memory could be key to success. Well, you may never have as much memory talent as the people on Superhuman do, but there are ways you can significantly increase your memory ability. In this TED Talk presentation, I'll be discussing your memory, the science behind your memory, memory techniques to improve your memory, and some cool facts. So to start off, there are seven memorization techniques. They are low C mnemonics, storytelling, chunking, spaced repetition, lifestyle improvements, and mind maps. And a lot of you guys probably have heard of some of them before, and a lot of them are similar techniques. So I'm going to be discussing three of them. The first one is low C. And low C is very common amongst the memory experts. This one is a very physical technique with your brain process and it's used for memorization of physical things in your daily life, for example, a grocery list. So what you want to do is you want to think of a place you're familiar with, and most people tend to choose their homes, so that's what I'm going to, that's what I'm going to be doing for this presentation. You want to think of a place in your home that you're, a path that you're going to be taking, for example, from the front door to the back door, kitchen to the garage, or wherever you choose. And every single time you use this method, you're going to be doing the exact same pathway. If my list is Skittles, light bulbs, hairbrushes, and sunscreen, you're going to connect each object on your list to each of the uh, items in the room. So for example, if I go into the front door, then the carpet will be made of Skittles, and then I'll walk past the stairs and light bulbs will fall on my head, and then I go into the TV room and brush my hair while watching TV, so on and so forth. So you basically just want to create a story out of your objects, and your story can be as creative as, creative as you want. Now, before I discuss my second technique, I'm going to ask for a volunteer. So would somebody like to uh, raise their hand? And I'm just going to ask a quick question. Yes. I'm just going to have you, you can stay seated, it's fine. Um, I'm just going to have you memorize a series of numbers. And when I'm done telling you the numbers, you can, if you would like to just repeat them back to me. 5219647337. Can you repeat them back to me? Five, two, one, nine, six, four, seven, three. Very good. And now for the second level, um, I'm going to have you memorize this series of numbers. Eight, one, four, two, oh, nine, three, six, eight, five. No. Eight, one. It's, it's OK, though. Can, <laughs> Great job. Um, but you do have an above average memory. So a fun fact is the average human can only remember four to seven things. And you just memorized eight things the first time. So great job. So this technique that I'm going to be discussing now is going to be very helpful with memorizing two to three times the amount of information. And it's called chunking. And you can use this for numbers, words, and once again, a physical thing like a grocery list and objects. For numbers, you use this actually in your daily life for a telephone number. And you just want to group numbers together. And your brain, it just tricks your brain into thinking it's much easier to memorize four two-digit numbers than one eight-digit number, or like one single number for eight numbers. For words, you can use this for vocabulary words. For instance, you could group vocabulary words by similar sound or similar meaning. And your brain just connects them together, flows from one to the next. And then for objects, we're going to go back to the grocery list example. You can use this for, instead of just memorizing nine products, you can do three vegetables, three fruits, and three dairy products. Now I'm going to ask for one more volunteer. And we're going to memorize another quick series of numbers using this technique. So would somebody like to volunteer for that? Yes? Um, in the tie, yeah. Oh, yeah. 52, 19, 64, 73. 52, 19, 64, 73. Great job. You just memorized eight numbers. And it's connected together, and so it makes it easier that way. For my final technique, um, 
It's a technique that is called spaced repetition, and this one is very useful for students. And essentially what you, what you want to do is introduce time intervals between your study sessions, and that will increase your ability to be able to memorize. And a study done by Herman Ebenhaus shows that if you memorize for con a consecutive 40 hours, you are very likely to, percent 80, to forget 80% of your information. So if you introduce these time intervals, you have an increased chance of memorizing all your information. And now the question becomes, why do these techniques work? And more importantly, why does memory work? Or how does memory work? So for loci uh, and a lot of the other techniques, 65% of the world are visual learners, and these techniques all involve visual things. So even if you're not a visual learner, though, your brain naturally grasps on to concrete and physical objects versus abstract things like numbers. So that's how a, lot of, a majority of the techniques work. But for chunking, it's just tricking your brain into thinking you're memorizing less when really you're memorizing the same amount. And now, before we can understand how space dot repetition works, I need to explain to you how memory works. So as a lot of us probably know, there are two types of memories, long-term memory and short-term memory. So when you're at dinner ordering your food, you're using your short-term memory to remember what you want. And once you're done with dinner, your brain tosses the information. It's no longer relevant nor useful to your life. But once you recall the information for the first time again after you're eating, it gets transferred along with the hypothetical path into your long-term memory. And this path starts off really weak, but the more and more you recall this memory, the stronger and stronger the pathway is, and the more vivid the memory remains. So space repetition works off of this exact same principle. You're first introduced to the information, and it goes into your short-term memory. You forget about it, you let the information go, and then you recall again for the first time a couple, maybe like an hour later, a little while later. And your brain, the information gets transferred into your long-term memory along with that weak hypothetical connection, and the more and more and more you recall the information, the stronger and stronger and stronger the hypothetical pathway becomes, and the more vivid the information remains, just as if you're reading it off your computer screen or your textbook or wherever you initially got the information from. So why is spaced out repetition, why if you just studied straight for a long period of time, um, why that's less effective than introducing time intervals is because if you just study for a straight long period of time, then you're all the information stays in your short-term memory, so once you forget about it, later that day you go to take the test, the information is no longer there, or maybe a very small portion of the information remains. So for this presentation, I hope that you learned um, some cool memory facts and cool memorization techniques, the brain science behind all these techniques, and developed a cool new talent. Thank you.